What is up guys, this is Dr. Hamas Tech, welcome to my channel. So today we're going to look back at the S20 Plus. I have been using this for about 3 weeks. And we're going to do a small mini review here because the latest update has come to this phone. I know people out there with the Exynos 990 versions had a lot of problems. So we are going to see whether this latest update has improved the Exynos 990 performances on the S20 Plus. And also, I'm just going to do a small review here on how I feel about using this phone for the past 3 weeks. So one of the things that I have to really give it to Samsung is definitely their amazing displays. If you're coming from the S10 or S9, you may not feel so much of a difference. And that is actually a compliment for the fact that Samsung has been making great displays for a very long time. Even at 60Hz at your Quad HD Plus setting, it will give you a very nice experience when you're watching content. But if you're like me and you want it at 120Hz for the extra smoothness, definitely you are going to have a very good experience. And if you couple that with that huge 6.7 inch screen, watching content like YouTube, Netflix, Hulu and everything else will definitely make it more enjoyable. If you're one of those people that uses their phone for everything every day, you will definitely enjoy the extra screen size. And how did Samsung actually give you a 6.7 inch screen without making it feel so thick? is by giving you a bit of some curved screen on the sides. It definitely gives you a bit more futuristic feel, but it does come with a set of problems as well. One of the good things that Samsung has done with that curved screen is to give you something called the Edge Panel feature. It is a very easy and convenient way to access your favorite apps just by swiping from the side of the screen. I do wish that other manufacturers as well would follow Samsung and make full use of that curved screen on the side. One of the things that Samsung has greatly improved is the One UI skin on top of Android. It's definitely better than the touch whiz that we had in the S9 series and before and it's a good thing that they have actually upgraded to One UI on the other platforms as well. It's definitely cleaner and more user friendly. Some of the small features like one-handed mode and swipe down to access the quick settings menu is definitely a nice feature that they have added on. I honestly wouldn't say it's one of the best Android skins out there. Google's stock UI with their pixels and OnePlus Oxygen OS is definitely one of the better Android skins out there. But it's nice to know that Samsung is going in the right direction with their UI. With future updates, hopefully they will further improve it. And let's not forget about those heavily advertised cameras. As you have seen in my previous videos where I compare it to the OnePlus 6 and the S10 Plus, it is definitely an upgrade from those phones. But from the S10 point of view, it isn't too much of an upgrade as the S10 series are still getting software updates to improve their cameras. With that amazing hardware, it will be just a matter of time till they improve the camera significantly. It is definitely one of the best there is out there. But if you want to compare it to the iPhones, the Pixels and the Huawei's, it still falls short in some areas. I have taken a few pictures here and there to compare it with the old shots that I've taken before and leave a comment down below if you feel there's any difference between those shots. And here's some first world problems for you. I did mention that I love the big screen on it, but with that big screen comes with bigger problems as it will be harder to navigate through the phone. If you have small hands like me, it would be difficult to type stuff and you, most of the time you will have to use two hands to type out messages. And if you want to go across the screen, it would be a bit of a stretch. And again, if you couple that with the curved screens on the sides, you are definitely going to get some accidental touches. It is something to get used to and if you don't, you will probably be quite annoyed by using the curved screens on the phone. One of the good things that the S10 series has done is we're coming out with a S10e with a flat screen and I did hope that the S20 will come with a flat screen. I believe that there is still some market for those flat screen users out there. And another thing is the lock screen and biometrics. Samsung did claim that they increased the sensor for the fingerprint. They are using a ultrasound compared to other brands that are using more of an optical scanner. And to be honest, I had to actually press multiple times to unlock my phone most of the time. Even registering the same finger multiple times didn't really help with the issue. With the latest update, I didn't really feel much of a difference. The same can be said as well for their face unlock. It still isn't very convenient and most of the times I have to actually look at it at a perfect angle to get it to unlock and most of the time I have to use the passcode or pattern to unlock. One of the major issues you will know if you're an S20 user is the fact that Samsung has decided to use two different chipsets for their flagship model. They have been doing that with their previous models 
and even here in Malaysia, we have been always getting the Snapdragon version. But for this year, they decided to give us the Exynos 990. In the last few years, Qualcomm has definitely improved their Snapdragon chipsets, producing better results than their Exynos rivals. It's definitely more efficient in terms of performance, battery consumption and heat management. Many people including myself had a lot of problems with the heating issue on the Exynos 990 variant. Even with minimal tasks, their phone will heat up like an oven. That will definitely affect you when you are loading up apps, watching content and playing games. I did experience a lot of lagginess and crashing when I was trying to maximize the settings on my S20 Plus while playing games like PUBG. With the latest updates however, they did definitely improve the heating issues on the S20 series. Samsung did pack a lot of battery in their S20 phones and they did increase their wired and wireless charging speeds. But if you look at other brands like Huawei, Xiaomi, Oppo and OnePlus, their charging tech is miles ahead of Samsung. And I did wish that Samsung would at least give 30 watts of wired charging right out from the box. The wireless charging at 15 watts is nice and convenient, but it is still pretty slow. So overall, I am pretty satisfied with the latest update from Samsung. It is still a long way more to go and I am excited for future updates. So that's it guys, this is Dr. Hamas Tech. If you enjoyed this video, do click the like button. For more content like this, do click the subscribe button down below. So take care and wash your hands.